This video contains instructions on how to collect bond data from the Morningstar Direct database as well as generally how to access the Morningstar Direct bond database. So let's take a look at, at access first and then we'll get into the particulars of collecting data for the bonds. So in Blackboard we have a folder right underneath the My Finance Home Course uh, labeled the Weighted Average Cost or WAC Project. And if you click on uh, that in there, you'll find quite a bit of information, uh, directions for the final submission, an example of what a final submission will look like. These are due on March the 17th, as well as uh, directions on where and how to access the Morningstar database. Uh, so I'll open up that file, that PDF file, and uh, we can see here that Morningstar is uh, installed on the desktop of all computers on uh, floors 2, 3, 4, and 5 in the central library on one computer in the business library, librarian's office here in the business building, uh, Office 342. Uh, everyone's going to use the same username and password to access the Morningstar Direct database. We have the, the username and password here. Um, if you go to the uh, Morningstar, if you want to access Morningstar in the Central Library, uh, you can go to the Business Librarian's Office door if you need some help. Uh, we have Carol and Ruthie. They've been doing this uh, project, uh, supporting this project for quite some time, so they, they should be able to help you. And if you're in the Business Bureau, uh, Building during the Librarian's Office hours, there's one computer uh, there as well. And uh, here's pictures of, of Ruthie and Carol. So, after you log in with the username and password uh, provided to the Morningstar Direct database, we can put in our company's name right there at the top in the search box. And my company's name is Bemis. And you may have run into uh, this situation right here. Notice that there's a BMS, a ticker symbol, stock ticker symbol BMS for Bemis. And then there's another BMS for Bramier Shipping Services. Uh, but if you look over here at the, the country of listing, we see USA and Great Britain. We want to select the USA firms. And when we click on um, BMS for the USA, we get the quick take, which is a snapshot of the, the current stock price and some information. But for the purposes of this part of the project, we're only interested in the company's bonds. So I'm going to click on the bonds tab here. And it may take a little bit of time for this to load because this is actual market data. So if prices are changing, a lot of people are on the system, it can be a little bit slow. All right, so we can see some information about uh, Bemis Company. Their Morningstar credit rating is uh, triple B plus. Amount outstanding is $800 million worth of bonds. We also see their, their leverage. Their debt to asset ratio is 36%. And right down here, underneath the yield to maturity, we actually have the listing of all the company's bonds. Now I'm going to click on maturity date to sort these from the nearest term maturity to the longest term maturity. For the purposes of this project, we want to focus on bonds that mature within 5 and 15 years. The idea being that a typical capital budgeting project has a life of about 10 years. So if we capture bonds between 5 and 15 years maturity, we can get a pretty good representation of what debt cost over a 10-year period of time. All right, so we'll notice here that we've got a maturity date. So we've got one bond that's maturing in, oh, this one's uh, pretty close. Well, it's about four and a half years. I, I would probably go ahead and round this one to five. And then we've got another one that's uh, maturing in about six and a half years. The dollar amount outstanding for each bond as well as the price. Now, a note here about price. In bond markets, bond prices are often expressed in percentages of face value. So in other words, this bond, uh, the BEMA 6.8% coupon bond, is selling at a price of 118.7% of face value, or $1,187. Uh, it's a fixed coupon. Uh, it's not callable. 
uh, we won't get into rule 144A, and the yield to maturity is 2.37%. So I want to collect this information for the bonds with maturity of 5 to 10 years and put it into a spreadsheet. I look something like this. So I want to label it here cost of debt worksheet, the ticker symbol of my company, the data date. Uh, we'll do this at the very end when we are, our spreadsheet is complete and we go back and enter the most recent data, market data. That'll be that date. And their name. And it's very important that the information is listed just like this. I have to grade uh, about 165 of these, so it's really important that we're standardized so that I only have to spend a few seconds uh, identifying each, uh, each project. So I've listed the name, the maturity date, the amount outstanding, the credit quality, and the price. Now I haven't updated this in a while, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So the price for the 4.5% bond is 109.8% of face value. It's the Again, 4.5%, 4.5% right here. Fixed, callable, yes. Yield to maturity for the 4.5% is 2.87. And then for the 6.8% bond, you can see here when I made my spreadsheet, I got these uh, reversed order. Right? Instead of nearest maturity to longest maturity, I have it uh, reversed. It's, that's not not a big deal there. Uh, credit quality. Price on this one is 118.7%. Coupon, 6.8. Fix, callable, no. Yield to maturity on this 2019 is 2.37%. Let me just real quick. Sort this. So that I have it matching from a longest maturity to shortest maturity. And market value is going to be the dollar amount outstanding. Now keep in mind, if we look over here at the Morningstar data, the amount outstanding is a million, so it's 400 million. So the market value then, if you look here at my cell, this is C4, where I put the 400 right here, multiplied by 1 million dollars times E4. Now this means that it's trading at 118.7 percent of face value. So I'll multiply that by E4 divided by 100. So I convert it to 1.18 seven. That gives me a market value and I'll get to the weights here in just a second. The market value for the 4.5 percent coupon bond is going to be C5 multiplied by one million dollars times E5 divided by 100 so just the same as before, and that gives me a, when I add the two together, I'll just use the sum fu format, uh, sum function in Excel, that's $914 million. The weight is going to be the market value divided by the sum of the market value. And for some reason, this one's not working. Let's see here. This is equal to market value divided by the sum of market value. There we go. And just to double check, J4 divided by, oh, see my mistake? It should have been divided by J6. And I knew I had a mistake because the weights together, I'm going to sum the weights right here as before, 
have to equal 1. So whether you have 2 bonds or 20 bonds, the sum of the weights has to be 1. If it's not, you know you've got a mistake in your, your cells like I just did. Now weighted yield maturity then is just simply going to be the yield to maturity here in column I4 multiplied by the weight. And then the weighted yield to maturity is going to be the summation of the weighted yield to maturity for each bond. For me it's 2.06. And then I'm going to create, I'm going to merge the cells here so I can have weighted yield to maturity equals, and then I'll just have that equal to L6. I want to highlight this, and the highlighting helps me to, to find the, the data later on. So the average cost of debt financing for BMS is 2.61%. And we'll discuss uh, the different equity measures of uh, equity measures. In other words, how we calculate the cost of equity using the dividend growth model as well as the capital asset pricing model, which we're going to talk about uh, beginning uh, next week. And that is it on this project or this part of the project.